Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our auto centers franchise mode. So in last episode we had the season simulation and it didn't turn out to be a very good one as our defense kind of, I think it was amazingly our defense that made us miss because like our offense like Pocanov still had 41 goals this season and then also Voinov had 37 goals and Loktyanov played pretty decently so I think it was just mainly because of this defensive core because as you can see like the yeah the second pairing is a little weak and then the top six pairing is definitely weak actually I think there was an injury right or no there wasn't okay but still yeah we were really weak defensively and then we didn't have the greatest depth so I think that's probably why we missed the playoffs this season okay so yeah that's pretty much why we missed the playoffs um other than that, I think we had a pretty solid season. As you can see, we missed the playoffs by two points in our division, but our division was really strong. Like, we could have even been in seventh. Um, so, yeah, we're up here in the off season, or well, we're not in the off season yet, actually. We haven't simmed to the off season to see where we're drafting yet. So, let's get to that spot first and also see the awards for the season since we haven't done that yet. Um, Hornquist is back, but he was already in the lineup anyways, and it doesn't really matter. But yeah, I think it was just mainly that defensive core, because our goaltenders, I think, were okay, but, um, the reason they had such a higher goals against the average is because of the defensive core, and then our offense was producing, so I think it's just we need to start drafting a lot more defensemen. That's probably what we're going to do at the draft. And then also in free agency, we're probably going to like have to pick up some like top defensemen if we can. Somebody that's more offensively minded because uh, Noah Dobson was more defensively minded when we signed him. And he picked up only like 20 something points. Um, okay, so we're getting close to seeing who wins the cup. Okay, let's go a couple more days once this simulation thing stops. Let's go another three days, because I think it's usually around the fourth. Hopefully we could have a better season this coming one. Like, if we make the right moves in the off season, we could potentially do good. We're going to have to re-sign uh, Loktyanov, though. And so the Rangers win the Stanley Cup. Okay, that's kind of weird. I wasn't expecting them to win the Cup this year. But then again, actually, they had some good players. So the Rangers win the Cup, and the Stars win the Calder Cup. So let's see all those awards now. I don't think we have any individual awards, but might as well check anyways. Okay, so awards. So Rangers, the Stars won the Presidents Trophy, and the Clarence's Campbell. So it was the Dallas Stars and the New York Rangers for the Stanley Cup. Uh, in the player awards, Johnny Goudreau takes home the Art Ross. Leon Dreisel takes him to Hurt. The Norris goes to Seth Jones. Johnny Goudreau gets to Lady Bing. Oleg gets to Calder. I don't even remember this guy getting drafted, so he must have been a late rounder. Um, Mantha goes to the or gets the Con Smythe with the Rangers, so he must have had a really good playoffs. Uh, Robertson gets the Vesna. Carter Hurt gets the Jennings. Spruev gets the Masterton. Nikas gets the Selkie again. Wow. He's winning a lot of those. Leon Dreisel gets to Ted Lindsay, and Ramsey gets to Maurice Richard. In terms of the AHL, any guys for us win any awards? I don't think so. Though. Yeah, nobody won awards for us. I didn't expect anybody to because we don't really have the greatest prospect pool anymore because a lot of these guys are getting older. Okay, so let's sim to the draft and find out our draft spot location. Hopefully it is... It will be top 10 no matter what, I think. Um, okay, never mind. So we finished with the 12th overall pick. So hopefully we could find something decent at that spot. We're probably not going to. But for the top 5, Minnesota has the top pick. Nashville has second. Followed by Washington, Arizona, and San Jose. Okay. So we have number 12. Hmm. Yeah, we're definitely going to still have to go after defensemen, though. And retirements roll out, and Evgeny Malkin hangs them up at age 42. Wow. Phil Kessel hangs them up at 41. Stamkos retires. Sagan retires. Wow. Yeah, this was definitely a big retirement group. Ryan O'Reilly, Jeff Skinner, Ryan Johansson. 
Any of our players, though, that's more what I'm curious about. Right, there you go. Nobody retires from us, and no goalies. How about goalies for the entire league? Because we didn't check goalies for the entire league. Um, so Frederick Anderson hangs them up with just almost 500 wins. Jake Allen and Calvin Pickard, David Riddich, etc. Okay, so let's get into the draft now. Like I said, we have 12th overall pick, so hopefully we could figure out something with that pick. I'll take a look at the draft class again, just in case. Because I don't really remember what's available at number 12. So, 12. Wait, where is 12 even? Oh yeah, 12. The scouts have this Kessler guy at 12, but my scout ranks him at like number 9. So if we might be able to get this guy. Adam Kessler, and he's a medium elite guy. That would be nice if we can get him. If not, for some reason, then we're going to... We could go after Watton, maybe. Yeah, we could go after Kessler or Watton. Watton might be an offensive defenseman, which would be nice, too. Okay, so let's see who goes for the first three picks. So Minnesota is going to take Wolski, medium elite sniper. Varakis goes to Nashville. And Washington is going to take Cote. That leads him to our pick, and Watton just went before us, but I think that's still, oh no, Kessler went to Columbus, I just saw too. Damn, those guys literally just took the two defensemen that I wanted. So we might not even be able to get a defenseman in the first round. Yeah, because there's no defenseman around the stage, there's two centers, which wouldn't be bad actually, because Loktyanov, if he ever leaves, which he might leave at the end of the season, you never know. Um... Let's see, 13th. Yeah, you know what? Let's just go with Julius Haynes in, in this case. He had like a pretty good season actually in the United States. 74 points in 66 games. Let's take him. This might be a bit of a long episode and, and I apologize for that. I don't know. It's just because this, I don't know how long this offseason is going to be. Second round, hopefully there's a defenseman available, which there is not. Oh my god. Is there any defenseman that should go higher? Not really. And they're only top six defensemen. Well, maybe we're going to have to just sign some good defensemen then in the offseason. Um, hmm. So if we want to go with Lazarov, he might be low elite. Let's take a look at his stats. Only four points in 49 games, but he was a plus seven. And he's looking like a sniper, but we don't know that for sure. I feel like Quincy might be good. Rod Quincy, he had a pretty solid season in the OHL, and he's from the 67s. He just had his third season in the OHL, actually. He's an overager. You know what? Let's just take this guy. Why not? Um, hopefully, he's not a medium AHL top six forward, though. I don't think he would be for the second round, but you never know. He could be just a top nine forward. Um, Saarinen, looking pretty decent as well. Chichu, top nine. This guy might be top six. But there is a defenseman that might be low elite. Kavasha. Hmm. Stanless Love Kavasha. No points in 16 games. Defensively minded player. Uh, you know what? Let's just take Saren. Because I don't know if that defenseman is actually that good. And we're going to auto sim the rest of this draft. Just because I don't want to do all the seven rounds. There you go. So after our Saarinen pick, the computer got us Yoshida, Mikola, Ma, and Kuta. Interesting names. Okay, so now comes the re-sign stage, which is a difficult part, because like I said, Loktyanov, his contract is the big one that we want to get back, and I don't think he wants a renewal. So we're going to have to probably give him a good extension, and then Kuleshov, he's going to, yeah, he needs an extension as well. Hopefully we can get him for like, cheaper like a lot of these guys i don't mind releasing eventually because i want to keep pakanov especially until he retires because he's a really good goal scorer um so Connolly definitely needs a contract he's an rfa currently and you know what yeah three years is actually pretty solid for him at that price so three years at 2.2 if i need to i would trade him pro horkin i don't really want to give him three years though 
I could give you... Hmm. I could give him two years, I think, maybe. Yeah, let's give him two years at 2.550. I think that should be fine. Hornquist. I'm going to give him only a one-year contract. Yeah, definitely a one-year contract. Actually, yeah, he must be getting a lot of growth after this one year. Hopefully he does. That would be nice. But we're going to give him one year at 1.55. Artukin, does he want a one-way contract this year? No, he does not. Hmm. Liam Eckholm looks like a bust. He wants a one-way contract. Uh, I could give you $1 million. Hopefully you actually are ready for the NHL this time around. 975. The rest of these guys are age hellers. Louis Boudreau. Anybody else? Oh yeah, Colton Turco. Turco is actually growing recently, so he might actually make the NHL if he keeps it up. Uh, Nordstrom, that's the backup. He wants only one year, so we're going to give him that. And then unsigned guys. Oh yeah, Arneson that we drafted last year. Wasn't he in the United States? Um, yes, he was. He might be actually good enough for the AHL. Hmm. Nah, I'm going to leave him another year, I think. Um, Defenseman-wise, we should probably sign some of our defensemen. Yeah, let's sign this guy, even though he's a low top four. Let's give him a chance for the AHL. Because we need to get some of these defensive prospects growing. Um, Haynes, we're going to sign just because of the fact he might be medium elite. We'll see what he is. He's probably only top six forward, but we'll sign him. And Dillman, no thank you. Wasn't there a 20-year-old that we just drafted as well? Who is the 20-year-old that I drafted? Um, Wasn't Haynes, Mikola, oh, it was Yoshida. Yeah, we should probably sign Yoshida. Or no, it wasn't Yoshida I drafted. The computer drafted us, this guy as well. Since they're 20-year-olds, they should have higher overalls, so they should be good for the AHL, but I don't know that. Um... Mikola. And we'll leave those guys for now. UFA wise, now this is the hard part. Noah Dobson, I'm definitely releasing. Free up some of that cap space. Um okay, so Locked Yanov, like I said, I want to get him back. Definitely. He doesn't actually want a lot of money. I could give him three years. Yeah, three years. Uh let's go. Seven point seven five oh. Hopefully he comes back to this team. Because like I said, he's just like a really good offensive player on that top line. Uh, this medium elite goalie I don't think is going to pan out. <laughs> oh, that was a funny joke actually. I didn't mean to say it like that. A pan out though because he's uh, Leonardo Pan. Hmm. I don't know if he's going to pan out. I don't think so. We're going to release Pan. And Kulashov. Wow, he wants a lot too. I'm not going to give him multiple years. Or if I do, actually, let's give him two years. Yeah, let's give him two years at... He probably wants $10 million. He actually wants an extension, though, so he might not. So let's give him two years at 9.6... Or 7.5, oh, yeah, let's go to 7.5, Um, A lot of these other guys, though, are going to be hard to get back. You know, I'm going to sign everybody that I can, guys, because I don't want you guys sitting through all this because this is boring as shit. So, I'll see you guys in a second. Okay, guys, so I got everybody back pretty much, except for I did release a lot of the bottom six guys. So, like, Anthony Beauvillier. I also actually released Paul Bowl, and I think there was a couple others. Uh, but Paul Bowl is one of the ones that you guys would remember because he was with us for, like, the last four seasons, I think. Um, so, yeah, I released him. Just because I want to kind of figure out what we need first. And I don't know if we need him because I think Westcott will be jumping to the NHL this year. So let's take a look at our centers. So we got at least two centers. Um, anybody else could play center? These, some of these guys might be able to play center. Fuga Fuji. Is he good at faceoffs? No, he's not. How about Lou Joseph? No, not really. Hornquist? No. Conley, I think, was. Yeah, Conley could play face-off as well. So we have three centers so far. And one, two, three, four, five. Actually, let's just count how much we have for forwards. So we had two. 
and then we have six here, so that's eight. We could have Shvidki technically too. So let's just say eight for now, still though. Nine, ten, eleven. And if we include Shvidki, that's twelve. And then defensively, we need a whole new defensive makeover. Because these could be our top six pairing, that could be a part of our top four. So yeah, we need another top four defenseman and another two top two defensemen. Yeah, and then one more forward, probably at least, maybe another center. It's hard to remember all that because I'm not writing it down, but we need at least... We need some defensemen for sure, that's mainly what we need because I want to find a defenseman that could help us out offensively like this Kapitanov guy, but he looking like a defensive defenseman. How does he play? Uh, not that offensively minded, but he's really good defensively. It looks like he's always been a plus. I think he was with Buffalo if I'm not mistaken yet. Second overall in 2019. And then there's Thomas Jabot again. Um... Nobody else really that's offensively minded. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? We're going to offer this Kapitanov guy a contract, even though he is a big guy to get. I'm going to get him at one year at... So let's give him nine and a half. Since I think we have a lot of cap, right? Yeah, we have 28 million. Because I want that one big defenseman, at least, to help us out. Because, like, last year we didn't have that at all, and that's probably why we missed the playoffs. So one year at 9.5 for Kapitanov. And then I said one more center, like a fourth line center. Hmm, can we find a fourth line center here? Suzuki? No, I don't think so. Rasmussen? No. Let's actually just sort by centers. Um, hmm. Let's see. Fourth line center. It's kind of hard to tell with the fog of war, which is annoying. Um, this Marco guy, maybe? He doesn't want that much. Boquist. This is a bit older though. Yeah, let's just give this Marco guy a contract. One year at $2 million. Bump it up a bit. And then let's see, left wingers. We're good for forwards after that. Because we got some depth forwards like uh, Mezzi, I think his name was. Defensively, we needed another top two and another top four. So, Clef Bomb's too old. Jet Wu wouldn't be that bad. Let's bring in Jet Wu for one year at, let's give him 6.250. I'm going to spend a lot on the defensive core this year. And then also, we need another top four. Um, and Nisimov, isn't that our former player? Or no? Yeah, we drafted this guy in the seventh round. He must have grown. I don't know how good he is, though. Hmm. Let's give him one year at 3.250. Bring back one of our draft picks. And then I think that's all we needed. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think that's all we needed. There's a medium elite goaltender that's looking like an 84 maybe. But I don't want to bring in one. Because we already got ours. So, yeah, I think that's all we need. Let's see if we get those guys. And then if so, then we will sim to next season and check out our lines. Hopefully they are pretty decent. So Wu has accepted, Anisimov has accepted, Marco has accepted, and the big fish Kapitanov has accepted as well. So we're going to sim up to next season and we'll check out our lines. Okay guys, so here is our lines. So there is a bit of a problem. We have to play Westcott as a center, even though he's not really a center. Like he's got 71 looking like on faceoffs. Um... But we might change it if Marco is worse and put Marco down to the fourth line. I don't know how good he is yet. So we're going to have to figure that out at the start of the next episode. Um, other than that, our offense looks pretty nice and deep. And then defensively, we're pretty solid on the top two and somewhat the top four. But the top six is still really weak. So I feel like we could still upgrade our defensive core during the season. Like maybe make a trade or something. And then goaltending wise, we're pretty solid. And scratched wise, we got two depth forwards in Mezzi and Shvidki, both 78 overalls. Um, we might have to find a depth defender. And then in the AHL, our kind of like our system's kind of ruined because we got some defensemen playing offense on this fourth line because we don't have enough forwards. Um, but uh, Julius Haynes, who we just drafted, is going to be playing in the AHL this year since he was playing in America last season. 
so hopefully he's good enough. Um, you know, actually, let's move on to the second line. And then also Eli Hines is still down there, who's a top six forward prospect. Oh, shit, Anisimov is down there. I forgot about Anisimov. Don't know how good he is. I should probably call him up because I gave him over $3 million. Yeah, we'll call up him probably, though. So we might have actually a decent defensive core. And then, yeah, that's pretty much that. Let me just call him Benisimov while I'm remembering this because I might forget about it. Because I'm known to do that. So let's see. Artugan. No, oh, it was an Artugan. It's Anisimov I want to call up. There you go. Hopefully Anisimov is actually worth the money that I paid him. And then that means let's go. Let's just go best lines actually down there for now. Defensively. Uh, I'm going to scratch Ekholm. Ekholm is a bust. We know it. Nismov, you could go in there, and yeah, that should be good. Hopefully, LaRose gets some growth, because that would help out as well. And yeah, actually, we look decent now. And I want to just make sure that guy is playing. Where is he? Oh, Haynes is playing. Okay, good. So yeah, anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this episode of our Sins franchise mode. So in next episode... We're going to sim at least most of the season. I want to do all the way up to the deadline at the very minimum. And hopefully we could uh, make a big splash this year. Because we're listed as a contender. Last year we were listed as hopeful. So hopefully this year we actually make the playoffs. Because last year was just one of those years where we just didn't make it. It was one of those weird years actually. Because it was one of the first years in like quite a while that we missed the playoffs. After like making it to the second round like four or five straight seasons so okay guys this pretty much wraps up this episode of our franchise mode so i wanted to give a quick shout out to my sponsors over at oilfield jersey co they have an abundance of nhl merchandise including these awesome hats which i'm going to show you in a second they got these six socky hats like this which you could actually wear inside out too as you can see they're also reversible so you can wear them with the socks inside which is pretty neat um, go check out their website the link will like appear right here and then also you could use coupon code snipe to save 10% off your orders so that's pretty decent like you're saving the tax on something like this so go check those out and yeah let me know what you guys think about them I, I really like them actually they're pretty stylish like I think I'm gonna be wearing these a lot when I uh, make like videos and whatnot so so anyways that's gonna wrap it up for this video so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time peace